Welcome to Development Dynamics with Maxi, the conversation, reflection, and storytelling platform where we seek to uh, listen and amplify the stories of leaders and practitioners who are making social impact or who are doing good um, in, in the development sector and also in the social and even enterprise sectors. Uh, today we are very lucky to have um, an individual whom we'll get to know as we continue. Her name is Bina Maseno. Bina holds many titles. I don't want to preempt any of this because I want us to all follow her story from birth to date, reflecting on different moments, reflecting on different milestones, and also different um, how she's gotten meaning to her life. And, um, and so Bina, thank you very much for honoring our invitation. This has been um, a long time coming, but we yes. finally are getting to do it. Asante Sana. Thank you so much. How are um, you today? I'm good. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing well. Yeah. And um, optimistic. Right. And uh, I always uh, love maintaining a positive uh, energy yeah. around me because Perfect. there's so much that happens around us that tries to um, use up our energy. So yeah. I'm always trying to just maintain positive energy. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. And yes. in that same spirit, let's Let's start with um, uh, Bina before birth, <laughs> which is an interesting way to, to phrase it. Bina mm -hmm. before birth means that where does, where are your roots? Mm -hmm. Where are your roots? Um, well, that's a, that's a very um, interesting uh, question. Mm. But um, I'll start by saying I personally was um, born and bred in um, Kayole. Mm -hmm. It's an informal settlement in uh, Embakasi Central in Nairobi. Right. But my parents come from uh, Kisi. Mm. And I know lately Kisi's have been in the news for all the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. All the wrong reasons. Yeah, such but Kisi man <laughs> on Google. <laughs> right, <you> right. <laughs> yeah, but my parents come from uh, uh, Kisi. Yeah. And um, that is um, in uh, Yamira County. Okay. So that is where I identify with mm. Um, mm. and um, yeah what who are um, are your parents were they farmers were they working um, what what was their occupation and what born are you in the family a little bit about your that that is <coughs> that story so um, I'm the first one mm -hmm. I'm the first born in a family of three mm. children mm -hmm. I have two amazing brothers mm. um, and uh, my father is in the transport business. Mm. And when I say transport business, I don't mean he owns trucks. Mm. I wish we did, mm -hmm. because then our lives would have been probably much better mm. and uh, maybe we wouldn't have grown up in the poverty that we grew up with. Mm -hmm. So um, my dad um, has been a driver mm -hmm. for uh, um, Matatus for Umoja route and mm -hmm. Kayole route. Mm. So growing up, he used to, um, be a driver for the matatus from uh, Kayole to town mm -hmm. and then um, um, now he went to the matatus for Umoja mm. and then uh, my mom um, my mom is a businesswoman mm -hmm. and I say a businesswoman um, I think it means different things mm. in our country mm. but she runs um, a small kiosk for mm -hmm. groceries that's mm -hmm. what she's done um, over time mm. And uh, it's now that she's going into farming. Mm. So she moved to um, Migori County mm -hmm. to um, now become a full-time farmer. Mm -hmm. Now that, um, you know, we're no longer in school mm. um, and um, we can uh, take care of ourselves, mm. yeah. Mm. Um, and uh, my brothers, um, one of them pursued engineering, mm -hmm. technical, is it technical engineering, the tech one? Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. then uh, both of them, actually, mm -hmm. um, both my, uh, my brothers. Yeah. Mm. Um, but they haven't had an opportunity to practice in their industry. Mm. So um, one of them moved into um, marketing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other one um, is working in, um, what is it called? This company is a deal with CCTV and all that. All right. Yes. Yeah. yeah one okay. of them. Yeah. Um, I think. When I just think about um, my childhood, mm -hmm. I can say for me, things that keep defining who I am mm -hmm. and um, what I continue to do in my leadership journey 
is um, number one, um, growing up, mm -hmm. I lost uh, four friends to crime. Mm. And in Kayole, uh, in Kayole. Mm. yeah, growing up in Kayole, mm -hmm. um, I lost four friends to crime. And this was so personal to me because, um, you know, these are people you grow up playing with, you know, like literally your parents are friends with them. Mm. And uh, sometimes it makes me so emotional because um, one of them, it was mob justice. And um, so that, that was my mom's best friend. Mm. So um, her son died um, due to mob justice. Mm. And uh, we didn't know, um, like, he was actually um, a criminal gang, mm. you know? Because that's not how you see your friends. Mm. You see, when you yeah. grow up, that's not how you see them. Mm -hmm. And um, another one, the same thing. Mm. And then uh, the two others, uh, which is probably um, a story we will still discuss in this set. Mm. Um, the two others were offering me security during my political campaigns mm -hmm. because I didn't even have money mm. to hire security when mm. I was a politician mm. or when I was a political aspirant. Mm. And um, one of them was shot dead one morning. Um, and then uh, the other one again, it was mob justice. Mm. So I think for me, um, losing people mm. I have grown up with mm fueled my passion for community development mm. at a very young age very young because age. I have seen the pain of a struggling mother mm. burying their own son. Mm. And it's one of the hardest thing to witness, mm. hardest thing to witness. Because mm. you can imagine, if I talk about someone like my mom who runs a kiosk and her friends wash people's laundry to be able to afford to take their kids to school, and then this pers person you've taken to school, struggling like that to raise money mm. from Kazia Kufua, and don't even make much at mm. the informal settlement when you're doing people's laundry, you know, mm. you're probably doing work for like uh, five hours and you're paid like 200. Mm. So you can imagine by the time you actually raise enough to take your child to school, mm. and then one day you're called and uh, it's mob justice and mm. you can't even identify someone, you know. I remember uh, one of my friends, we couldn't even identify him. Mm. And the brother was like, let's look at his, uh, what is it, in his Fingerprint? Let's look at Makucha. Oh, his nails. We couldn't even identify him. Mm. And it was just like, let's look at his uh, nails. Mm. Like literally, like you have to like look at someone's nails for us to be able to identify him. Um, so all that, mm. you know, looking at um, a lack of access to water mm. at the community, mm. lack of access to um, electricity, mm. you know, just the poverty people live in and how it strips you of your dignity. Mm. So witnessing all that while mm. growing up mm. just fueled my passion. Mm. Um, for community development and mm. at 22 years of age mm. I threw myself in the ring mm. and I ran for um, a member of a county assembly mm. which and, mm -hmm. again um, came at a very huge cost mm. because uh, given the background that I've given mm. of how I grew up mm. my parents couldn't even afford my education mm. you know I was educated by my by my mom's brother he's mm. called uncle rogers he's mm. my favorite uncle mm. because he understands me he mm. gets me you know he gets my ambition mm. you know so he's the one who's um, paid my school fees mm. you know throughout um high school mm. you know and um i had to fundraise mm. you know and knock people's doors mm. to actually access university education, education. you know mm. i had to do door to door mm. And uh, that's how I've met some of the um, powerful individuals in this country. Mm. You know, during um, my Miss President campaigns, which we'll discuss maybe mm. if it comes up, mm. I approached one of uh, uh, my mentors, mm -hmm. Dr. Julie Oseko. Mm -hmm. um, she's a, a senior uh, magistrate for the Malinde Court, mm. right? And, uh, you know, uh, we're just reminiscing and going down memory lane, mm -hmm. even um, how she met me. Mm. And she was like, you know, Bina, I am so inspired because the very first time I met you, it was in town and you were in slippers, literally, at you know, CBD in town, like district, at yeah. Harambe, you know, like uh, where uh, the Ministry of Education was, mm -hmm. Jogo uh, House. Before, yeah, Jogo mm -hmm. House, before mm -hmm. it moved to GPO, mm -hmm. at Jogo House, that's mm -hmm. where I met, you know, the uh, Dr. Julie. Mm -hmm. And that day, like, it was 
my last day doing door to door i mm. was so tired because mm. every other day i knew my options at the community were so limited mm. i was like if i don't do something to raise my school fees mm. i'll probably get married at a very young age mm. and then what does that mean mm. for me you know because my parents and i had passed so well mm. like literally i'd passed so well mm. i had what an a minor mm. um so um i would come to town and i tell myself you know what bina um just do what you have to do and i'd probably come to let's say a hotel i'm i'm like i'd love to see the manager mm. i have an, an appointment with him they're mm. like you have an appointment but in my mind i'm just like i have a spiritual appointment because i prayed mm. about it mm. so in my mind i'm like i have a spiritual appointment and mm. i'll just stick to that i'm just like mm. yes mm. i have an appointment with him mm. i'd go in there present mm. my papers mm. i'm like my name is so and so i have passed so well i'm just seeking support mm. if you can support my education mm. Um this is what I risk. Mm. If I don't get this education, mm. um this is what I'm staring at. Mm. This is the kind of family I've grown up in. This is what my friends, you know, my friends teenage pregnancies, I've mm. lost friends to crime due mm. to unemployment. Just help me. Let's go back <coughs> before, and we'll, we'll we'll connect it with th that place. This is mm. very deep. This mm. is um it's deep and it's a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I want us to um to go back a, a bit. Mm -hmm to where you even began school mm -hmm. um did you do so you're growing up in kayole did you do the the journey that um kenya prescribes which is you know the early education then primary school was it all in kayole where did you um i know you've touched about you know your community friends but i just want to hear a little bit more about your own school and also your experiences mm -hmm. especially um as a young girl growing up in Kayole um what's that like how is that looking like where do you go to school how do you transition through what were, what was exciting also about those times for any fond memories mm -hmm. of uh, of back then um so i i schooled in Kayole mm -hmm. i went to Mwangaza primary right. um in Kayole that you know from uh, from kindergarten. Yes. Okay. Uh, no, uh, from kindergarten there was a school around home. Mm. I can't even remember the name because it was shut down. <laughs> mm. You know these schools that are just opened in plots yeah. and all that. It yeah. was just uh across plots are apartments. Yes. Uh, oh yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Plots are apartments. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're not apartments. Well, in they're the kind of apartments in the hood, but yeah. yeah projects, yeah. apartments. Yes. <laughs> so, um there was a school just uh, across mm. um our home. home. Mm -hmm. uh in one of the plots uh quote unquote uh, apartment mm -hmm. which is not an apartment because it's not self contained mm -hmm. but yeah and then uh from uh primary level from mm -hmm. uh, uh class, class one, 1 i went to mwangaza primary school mm -hmm. um so i'll say both the negative and the exciting bit sure. uh so i think for me the fact that um accessing water you know and the impact of that mm -hmm. you know not having water in school mm -hmm not having even all. yeah like not having having clean toilets because there's no water like there's, there's at no all water Monday to Friday like there's no water i think that was one of the biggest challenges when it comes mm. to hygiene and yeah. sanitation you know yeah. and if water uh, because i know there are days would carry water from home mm -hmm. you know there are days you'd carry like water uh, from home because on fridays we're required to wash our class So, mm. you know like our students mm. you know were required i'm not sure i know you went probably to group of schools not, not but yeah. yeah so <laughs> on fridays we're required to wash our classes mm. so we would carry water from home mm -hmm. you know um so i think for me there was that mm. and then um there was also the challenge with uh, being chased from school half the time because you have school fees, school fees balances, you know yeah. balances to mm. pay so that, that that also was another challenge because mm. it does something to mm. your self esteem mm. and confidence levels mm. you know mm. um and impacts your identity as well because then you know people like label you mm. you know and so half the time you don't even know if you're going to be in school about? it's not even more than 5000 mm. literally you know like what you're paying then you mm. know so there was that mm. uh but then uh, the um exciting bit the, on the positive side on the positive side mm -hmm. is actually growing up in the informal settlement you know i didn't know we were poor yeah. until i grew up mm. and left the hood mm. i actually didn't know we were poor mm -hmm. i thought everyone lives the way we live mm. like people don't actually access yeah. basic needs as they would love to yeah. i didn't know we were actually that poor mm. you know mm. until one time we visited my aunt in uh, buruburu mm -hmm. and 
Was I not shocked? And this what? is Buruburu. But Buruburu was, was it. Yeah, true. Those days, you mm. know, mm. Buruburu was like the place to live. I mean, if you came from um, Mbakasi Central, Mbakasi West, like Umoja, mm. Buruburu was the place to live. Mm. Uh, so I didn't know, you know, so we visit my aunt and I'm like, oh my God. So guys actually live in self-contained homes. Mm. Oh my God. So you can, this, you can actually flush a toilet, you mm. know, because now in the community, mm. so you share the same uh, toilet with everyone. Yeah. And it's not for flushing, mm. you know. Mm. So that is when it hit me. There's a different life. People live mm. apart from our life mm. that people actually live dignified lives mm. in other parts of the country. Mm that people actually access electricity, people access water, people have better roads mm. in other parts of, you know, part of the country, that, that, mm. that there are areas that are actually more developed mm. than other areas, mm. you know, because now my friends were just like me, you know, mm. my peers mm. were just were in the were, same WhatsApp. You were just happy kids. We were just happy kids uh, and we plenty. had normalized our poverty, mm. you know, because mm. we didn't know better, mm. you know, mm. we didn't know better. Were you happy? You know, I would say, uh would have been happier mm. you know and mm. I, I think we were happy because we normalized mm. you know mm. what we saw what you, because what? we didn't know there could be mm. better mm. you know mm. so that is on the flip side of it mm. that until i became like you know i be I, and I began to understand my environment mm. i was like actually we are poor mm. you know mm. um so that was on the flip side of it, you mm. know. And um, um, I think just the connection with friends, mm. getting to play, mm. you know, with other uh, kids. You know, nowadays, like I don't even see kids play as much as we did. Mm. Kids mm. connect more as mm. much as we did. Mm -hmm. Kids uh, watching, you know, coming together to even just watch a movie and interact mm. over something mm. as much as we did. Mm. Like we had to be dragged from outside mm. half the time. You know, mm. you had to be dragged from outside, mm. dragged to go and actually take a shower. Like mm. literally you had to be reminded because half the time you just wanted to spend time interacting, mm. playing, mm. laughing, mm. you know. Nowadays, you know, like even visit people's homes and their kids on their... On their on their gadgets, mm. you know. So I find that interesting mm. and I kind of feel like uh, growing up like that is even impacting how I'm parenting, you mm. know, like mm. literally, you mm. know, I'm just like, you're not going to have screen all the time. Mm. Literally, mm. you are not going to have screen all, all the time. Mm. You're not going to have you be on your phone mm. all the time. So that is on the uh, flip side of it. Mm. And then uh, high school, um, so I come from a, a Seventh Day family. Mm -hmm. Seventh Day Adventist. Seventh Day Adventist mm -hmm. family. So. Uh, there's something also about some Seventh-day Adventist family mm -hmm. preferring their children to go to a Seventh-day Adventist School. institution, okay. right? Mm -hmm. And that was my grandfather, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. It was like, my first granddaughter is going to go to this uh, Seventh-day Adventist institution. Mm -hmm. That is just perfect for them mm -hmm. because of the values they have, mm -hmm. you know. So I went to Uganda mm -hmm. for my, um, my high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, my uncle, mm. uh, Rogers, mm -hmm. uh, is the one who facilitated my education in terms of paying, yeah, throughout mm. Uh, mm. Uh, high school. Mm. So the thing I missed about high school was the fact that we couldn't even eat meat because, By you know, seven. the thing, yeah, mm. you know. At all? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. For the whole time I was there, we didn't. Only when you break? Only when I would come home. Yeah. But never, ever. You know, would take soya, mm. soya beans in place of meat. Mm. That is, I don't take soya nowadays. <laughs> I'm just like, I know it's healthy. You had enough. But I had enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, which which part of Uganda was this? Uh, Lu Lugaza. Lugaza. Yeah, Lugaza, Bugema. I went to Bugema okay. High School. All right. Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah, I went to All Bugema right. High School. Right. Did you? Did what? You what was? I mean, other than the missing uh, your favorite delicacies, <laughs> what was life in Uganda like? Um. Number one, um, I enjoyed um, my friend's hospitality. Mm. Um, you know, I tend to think the Ugandans I've interacted with are actually quite hospitable, right? Um, so I enjoyed that. And um, I also um, enjoyed the fact that for the circle I was in mm -hmm. at that particular time, they mm -hmm. made me feel like I am part of them. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's not you versus mm -hmm. us. You know, sometimes you can be in spaces where people create uh, cocoons. Mm -hmm. So I didn't feel like I was uh, in a cocoon as mm -hmm. much as 
we had, uh, of course, Kenyans would prefer to be in their own uh, cocoons, mm. but it was easier to interact. And maybe it's because I joined mm. at, uh, you know, at Form 1, mm. you know, maybe because yeah. most Kenyans uh, go to Uganda for A-levels. Mm. So they finish here like uh, Form 4 and then mm. they go to Senior 5 and mm. Senior 6. Maybe mm. because I joined from Senior 1, mm. which is like uh, uh, form, one. form 1 here. Mm. So maybe it became easier because then mm. all of us were fresh mm. and then uh, mm. we were now journeying um, mm. journeying together mm. and then also I think enjoy their delicacies mm. you know matoke groundnut soup you mm. know like I just became accustomed um, mm. to their cuisine mm. which I think is also um, a healthy way uh, to eat mm. but also um, enjoyed uh, uh, learning a bit about uh, another country culture. you know mm. um, and also their culture their mm. way of living mm. Um, their, you know, their politics mm. uh, of the day. Mm. Back then, uh, you know, like I didn't even understand much about what it means, um, you know, like the impact of even elections mm. on uh, citizens, mm -hmm. you know. Mm. But of course, you know, just the history, we're talking mm. about their history. So mm. I did enjoy that as well. Mm. So those were some of the aspects I enjoyed while I was in Uganda. You also became Ulibalehe. You became a teenager while, well, I mean, this is high school, this is, right? Yes. So within those years, what do you remember about your teen life? Uh, um, what do I remember about my teen life? Um... I think I would say what I remember is uh, I think number one being in a mixed school mm. was different oh. because it wasn't like girls only yeah. you know yeah. so you kind of like don't know how to interact that much With boys you know from Uganda. yes or just Primarily. from yeah <laughs> just the With other boys. gender yeah. you know mm. like uh, just you know the other gender like mm. uh, literally mm. you know so mm. um, and also just trying to. Uh, remain clear to you know what your parents tell you mm. don't do this don't mm. come back home pregnant mm. you know like all those kind of things mm. you know so this was a mixed school mm. so there was that mm. trying to uh, understand uh, boundaries mm. at a very uh, young age mm. and uh, reflecting on where you're coming from like mm. if you mess up girl mm. you know this is the family you're coming back to you mm. know so um, that mm. you know and trying to so have friends who care about boundaries, mm. you know? And I think the thing with that is uh, in every institution, you always have uh, the Christian unions, mm -hmm. you know? So for some reason, I just found myself in a circle of uh, friends who are part of a very like strong Christian union, you mm. know? So mm. half the time, they would like uh, keep you accountable, mm. you know? And then there's this thing about, you know, when you join like high school, like you have like, is it godmothers and godfathers, you know, mm. like who welcome you mm. when you join school? Mm. So I was lucky to have those, mm. you know? So I had uh, um, uh, my big sister mm. called Emma Nyarangi. Mm. Then I had, uh, um, Sam mm. Osoro, mm. Uh, he was like uh, my big brother. Mm. And then uh, there was John Bett, mm. uh, again, like my big brother. Mm -hmm. And uh, those two were always on my neck, mm. literally by the way, mm. like li literally mm. in terms of if I veer away and uh, they hear I have done something, they'd be like, they'd just call me out. Mm. Just like Bina, first of all, this is not even home. Let's mm. start there, yeah. you know? Mm. So I think for me, mm. that helped mm. in terms mm. of, um, them uh, keeping me accountable. It's interesting that I'm even remembering them, even you know, like just uh, going good. down um, mm. like a uh, memory lane. Anytime I'd be disciplined mm. and uh, we used to be like caned, mm. you know, like my friends are not caned in high school, you know, yeah. we literally like be caned. Even when you fail, you'd be caned in public, wow. like in public, you know, mm. when they're announcing your results, like it was one of the most embarrassing things come yeah. to think about it. Like, mm. That was one of the most embarrassing um, things, mm. being caned in school. Mm. Mm. Um, and also having head boys and head girls who have like almost veto power, you know? Like when the bell rings, they'd be like, kneel down. Mm. Literally, like kneel down, you know? Like that's how my high school was when mm. it comes to now the, the, the disciplinary measures, mm. right? But yeah, um, I think, it was actually just interesting mm. studying in uh, mm. uh, studying in Uganda, mm. which mm. expanded also my circle. Yeah, you stayed there the entire four years. Yes, or six years. I did four. Four years. Yes, four years. So you finish and then. 
um, so I finished. I wasn't able to um, continue. Mm. So I came back continue home to now. Senior five. Yes, senior, okay. six. So mm -hmm. I came back home mm. and. Uh, but you still get a certificate. Yes, 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 yes. You still they do. They are our equivalent of KCSE. So yeah, when you come back here, mm -hmm. um, you have to like um, the Ministry of uh, Education have to, has to like translate that for you, so that you can actually use it to go uh, to an institution and say schools, yeah. this is what I actually got mm, you know mm, this is mm. uh, i got this points mm. i'm up so this mm. is an equivalent of this here yeah. so if let's say a university uh requires you to get let's say an a uh, for you to enter um, so they translate your division one mm. to what is it how many points do you get yeah mm. okay yeah. and so on returning here you have your good grades you've yes. passed yes and so uh, education ministry has done that now you go back to the story you're telling you mm. are knocking on people's doors to get yes to get um into uh, when you say you is it a university that you are looking for yes mm -hmm. a university or college mm. i just wanted to uh continue with my education mm. that's all i wanted mm. so so when I get back here, I'm not able to, my parents are not able to raise resources to take me to campus mm. or take me to college. And then uh, my mom's friend is just looking at me at the community. She's just like, yo, you're going to waste away in this community, mm. you know, mm. because um, she's also afraid because um, my two close friends dropped out of uh, high school uh, because of teenage pregnancy. And she's seen the impact of that in their lives, mm. you know, and she's like, oh, uh, if this happens to you, then um, I think it's going to impact even how you can support your family mm. uh, later. Mm. Um, so um, I sit down with my dad and um, my dad is like, what do you want to do? Uh, so I tell him I want to pursue journalism because mm. I have always been passionate about news. Mm. I want to pursue journalism. But then I tell him because we can't afford and because uh, I'm looking at our lived reality here you know in Kiswahili they would say kwa ground mm. mm. I can't pursue journalism right now I want to either be a chef a cook or a salonist mm. and my dad asks me why do you want to be a chef a cook or a salonist and I tell him it's because if I do this course right now it's skills I can move around with you know, like if I know how to make hair, even if you take me to Uganda, I can plate hair. Like those are skills that even if you take me to Dubai, I can plate hair. Mm. If I know how to cook food, even if you take me whatever place, I can cook, mm. right? As opposed to maybe I study journalism and then I go to Qatar and I can't report because I don't understand their mm. dynamics. So I cannot just get there and become a journalist or apply to be a journalist because it will take time for me to be accustomed to uh, their way of living, mm. their life. Mm. So. I was like, I want skills that are portable, that mm. I can be on the move with, mm. you know. Mm. While I'm waiting to pursue journalism, mm. can I play here? Can mm. I cook? Mm. You know, can I fix a car? Mm. You know, so I'm like, I'm either, uh, I'll either be, you know, let me either be a mechanic, mm. a salonist, or uh, a chef. Mm. And then, uh, because my dad, I did mention, he's in the transport industry, he's been a driver. Mm. Um, he said, uh, okay, there's a place we can take you, you know. And um, we, he took me to this uh, 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 mechanic uh, place, you know, where I can try and uh, learn, you know, um, because uh, he said, ah, okay, Basi, I can take you somewhere in some car garage where they can teach you about how you can be a mechanic. And um, that is where I began now studying, mm. you know, like learning experience. Mm. There's no class, by the way. This one is just now experience. Yeah. And uh, I think it's from those experiences that uh, also... Uh, my mom's friends uh, were concerned, even mm. my own dad at some point, like, mm. hey, you know here, because majority of the people who are here in this garage are actually okay. men. Mm. So kesho kesho, tomorrow mm. you just, someone will just tell you, oh, you know what, I can actually uh, give you a better life than you, be, than you actually coming here to mm. work with us. Mm. Then you're married off at a very young age, mm. you yeah. know, when you're not even ready. And uh, that is how I made the decision that I'm actually going to knock doors. Mm. I'm actually going to knock doors mm. because I want to pursue what I am very passionate about. Mm. And that's how I began just going to town knocking and knocking doors. doors. Yeah. Wow. That's very bold. Yeah. Which is the best and maybe weirdest experience that you, you got as you knocked on doors? 
Um, for me, it would be people sizing you up. Mm -hmm. You know, like number one, uh, when you get to the reception and mm -hmm. you say you have an appointment with mm -hmm. someone and they size you up. And then that was a time uh, when, uh, um, you know, our buses, you used to take them from uh, Mudurwa. Mm -hmm. You know, remember when Namichuki oh. said like, mm -hmm. uh, all the buses coming from, uh, you know, uh, using Jogo Road, mm -hmm. they go to, mm -hmm. they go to um, Mudurwa. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you, walking from Mudurwa to Uptown, like literally, by the time you get to Uptown, Vumbi you know, mm -hmm. like literally, you know, dusted, you're okay. dusty, you mm -hmm. know. So you're sweaty, you're dusty, perhaps you didn't have breakfast. So coming Uptown and you say you have an appointment and someone is sizing you up and thinking, um you have an appointment you know so already they become a barrier mm. to you asking for help mm. you know mm. um even the time i went to uh, meet dr julie at uh, intercon mm. um so I, I i i get to the entrance mm -hmm. you know and uh they're like i say i have a meeting you know guys are just driving in with big cars mm. it's in the evening and then she was on phone and she had a very serious meeting mm -hmm. so she wasn't able to pick up uh immediately mm. when i called in mm. so i tell the soldiers uh and they're just like mama apa akuna kazi akuna kazi apa mschana mm. so i tell them nikona mkutano apa mgeni wangu hata aliniambia nakaa kwa reception mm. atakuwa hapo kwa lounge mm. you know ma, you know mm. they told me to wait for them at the when i get there mm. they'll be at the lounge, the lounge yeah. but even just how they sized me up mm. you know like literally they refused to let me in oh wow yeah they refused to let me in at a hotel and i had an appointment what? they refused to let me in what happened I stayed there until mm. uh, Dr. finished uh, her meeting. She's like, where are you? So mm. I said, um, I'm at the gate. Mm. So like uh, the soldiers refused to let me in. Mm. She's like, why do they refuse to let you in? So I said, um, maybe it's because of how I look. Uh, and uh, so she was, she was mad about it. And uh, she said, she just went to the reception and said, why didn't you guys let my daughter in? Then they're like, oh, we didn't know she was your daughter, because, you know, her stature and mine is different. Mm. So she came and got me. Mm. <laughs> and I remember when we sat down, I was super emotional. Mm. Um, and then I was just there, you know, even just looking at the menu and I'm telling her, I can't even eat here. She's like, why can't you eat? I'm like, all the things I'm seeing here, this is how much we're paying our rent. Mm. And how can I eat? Right. You know, like, how can I eat our rent? Mm. You know, mm. like, we have areas at home, mm. and you're telling me to have a full cost meal. How am I going to have a full cost meal? I'd rather take that money and repay our rent. You know, she was like, um, You know what, Bina? One day you're going to be a big person, and uh, I don't want you to let your experiences yeah. define where you're going. Mm. Okay? Mm. Uh, don't let them define where you're going. Mm. Uh, you see people, all these people here, mm. imagine people mm. have, even them, they have their story. Mm. So um, just be comfortable. Mm. Oh, thanks. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. like, uh, like uh, just, uh, just be like uh, comfortable, you mm. know, just have something. Mm. I'm like, I can't have something, you know. And she chucked money and told me, how much is your rent? Nikamambia. Na rent ilikuwa 1500 mm. So we had like two rooms that was like uh, 3000 mm. Um She said, uh, here, take this 10000 They're going to go and pay your rent. Can we now have a meal? You know. And uh, she said, um, I'm going to journey with you. I want you to understand that you deserve all the good things in life. You know. And all the good things in life are not just limited to where you come from. You get to define how you want your future to be no matter how you came here, you know. Your parents were just a conduit for you to come here on earth, right? But then once you arrive here, you know, then you can define, you know, how, you know, you can change your view about who you are, how you want people to address you, you know. And uh, I think that shaped my thinking in uh, so many, so many, um, uh, so many other ways. Mm, yeah. mm, mm. Wow. First of all, hats off to to Dr. Julie. Um, we, I mean, flowers mm -hmm. to you because um, as a result of 
that kind of inspiration to you you have continued journeying and i'm glad that she said she would journey with you and even just for that particular moment yeah <laughs> she saw the felt need and the need also for you to eat there because um it's your first probably experience of eating at such a yes yeah <laughs> so i'm telling you i saw the menu i couldn't even i was just like oh what are these people, <laughs> what this is our rent yeah. like how are people like oh you my know? god yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah um hats off to her as we also continue to to listen to you so um so is it through her or mm. how then did you continue with um the, the the big thing you're looking for here is an opportunity for school so yes was your conversation with her to enable you to get to school so um i think in, um, as i had mentioned before mm. i met dr julie mm. when i went to knock doors at mm. uh uh, Jogo House. Mm. So I get there. Um, I say I have an appointment with um, um, the director for uh, polytechnic education. Mm. You know, like uh, the, the one in charge. Mm. And they say uh, he's not in today. We'll have an appointment at Sangapi. Mm. And like I said, I would mm. just go to buildings, and mm. I'm just like I have a spiritual appointment. Mm. I would tell myself I have a spiritual appointment, mm. and I would go in and say yes, I have an appointment. Mm. Because I prayed about it in the morning. Mm. And for me, I said, you know what? This is a spiritual appointment. I'm just going to go, you know. So they tell me the assistant director is the one who's there. So I'm there together with uh, Mama Eva. Mama Eva was my mom's friend. Mm. And uh, we walk in. Mm. And uh, it was uh, Mr. Jeremiah Oruko, mm -hmm. Dr. Julie, and her best friend. I'm forgetting her best friend's name. And her best friend mm. in that office that day. In fact, Dr. Julie was just about to fly out to pursue her doctorate, mm -hmm. right? Her PhD in mm -hmm. the UK. Mm -hmm. So she'd actually just come to see uh, Mr. Jeremiah, mm -hmm. um, you know, like their friends. Mm -hmm. So we get there and uh, I said, this was the last day I was going to do this because I had done it over almost a month and it was so exhausting. Mm -hmm. So we get there and you know that day in the morning, uh, Mama Eva had just come and said, Leo, by the way, you know, like, I've not even showered, I've not done anything. Mm. That is how, you know, that is how I found myself in town with sleepers. Mm. You know, party, party, literally. Mm. I am just like, okay. So we just go in. And because it had been a long day, I just break down. You know, like, I didn't even know how to explain my problem. Because I've been talking about my problem every other day. You know, I've been saying the same thing every other day. So, um, Mama Iva says... Uh, um, this is uh, like my daughter and I'm journeying with her because I know the dangers in the community. I have my own daughters. Um, I live with uh, my nieces who have babies. If you don't help this girl today, her future will not be the same again. And we know this office can help us because it's in charge of the polytechnics and looks at Jeremiah and actually starts speaking in law and breaking down and says, sir, you know, you're in charge of the uh, polytechnics, you know, you have the power to like uh, change this girl's life. If you don't change this girl's life, like she's almost the only hope we have, you know, she's the firstborn, she's the only girl. Um, I know you can do something about this girl. She passed so well, these are her papers, you know, she got, you know, like she got an A. Mm. Help her, like your daughter, you just help her. So Dr. Julie was listening and her best friend, you know, was listening. So they took my papers, looked at my papers. And then uh, uh, Dr. Julie said, you know, if I wasn't traveling, I would take her in. But I'm traveling. And her daughters also in, uh, were, in the, were in the UK. Uh, one of was pursuing, I think, her degree. The other one was pursuing her master's. So her daughters were actually outside. So she was like, if I wasn't uh, traveling, I would take her in. But I'm willing to journey with her. I'll mentor you anytime I'm in the country. I'll invite you to sit down with you. So, um, uh, Mr. Jeremiah Oruko looked at my papers and uh, said, um, yeah, go look for a college. Mm. You know, go look for a college. So, I just left. And uh, in my mind, the conversation I'd had with my dad, like, if you don't have enough resources, what would you want to do? I told my dad, I want to be a chef. I want to be a salonist or a mechanic. Skills I can use later when I finish. I can apply immediately and look for money and raise money to do my journalism. Mm. So that's what happened. I immediately just went to look for 
portable skills. Uh, 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 portable skills. And that is how I found myself at Graffin's College mm -hmm. and I pursued uh, hotel management mm -hmm. at Graffin's College. Mm -hmm. I came with my brochures mm -hmm. and I gave him, you know. And it's so, it's so interesting how, you know, sometimes people feel like, hey, how do you help someone you don't even know? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, this man didn't even know my second name. Mm -hmm. Literally, he just used to call me Bina, you know, like he didn't even know my second name, mm. you know, and he said, even me, I'll take you as my daughter from today, mm. you know, and he introduced me to everyone. He was the boss. Mm. He introduced me to everyone in his office mm. and he said, this is my daughter from today. When, mm. he ca when she comes here, she's my daughter, mm. you know, and uh, even when I finished from Graffins, you know, I sent a proper invitation, mm. like I wrote, you know, like Miss Maseno mm. and was like, who's this? I said, it's me. Because he didn't even know my second name, mm. literally. He just went out of his way and said, fine. And whenever he would not be there, he would tell the secretary, my daughter is coming in today. Um, she said school fees here this month, yeah, this time it's this much. That's it. I'll just find a Mecca Bahasha and said, I hope you do the right thing. You expressed yourself, you know your background. I won't even follow up with report cards. I trust you know what you're doing and where you want to go. Mm. That's all he would tell me, mm. you know. Sometimes I'd even take like six months. I'm not even seeing him. I go to the office, he's not there, you know. So in the meantime now, Dr. Julie now was complimenting these efforts mm. by us having these mentorship conversations, mm. you know. She would come back even with outfits and mm. she'd be like, you know what, Ben, I'd actually look good in this outfit, you know. Mm. I'd be like, e-bag, I can't even carry this bag to the hood. It will be stolen. She'd be like, no, just carry it, mm. you know. So she'd be like, no. You know, you can dress like this, mm. you know. So she tried to uh, ensure that I show up the way I would want to, mm. even if I could not like uh, afford it. Mm. And then we would sit down and be like, all these people are just like you. Mm. They're just like you, imagine. All of them maybe even have a, a sad story mm. than yours. You know, all of these people sit here, you know. That's so true. when she has parties at her home, she'd invite me. And I'd be so shocked that people mm. can spend that much just on her birthday. You know, she'd invite musicians over. On her birthday, I'm just like, I see this musician on TV. She's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's you know, it's my husband's birthday. It's my son, you know, I mean, it's my daughter. She only has daughters. Uh, it's my daughter's birthday, you know. And I got to see the other side of life. Mm. And I saw this is how people live a dignified life mm. when it comes to access to these things. Mm. Yeah. Mm. At this time, you've just finished uh, Graffin's College, which you now take your... Um, invitation to your sponsors, so, so 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 to speak, is it for a graduation or just to, yes mm -hmm. for my graduation? All right. So um, I finish at uh, Graffin's and uh, I send invitations, you know, to you know, of course, family members yeah. and uh, um, people who've supported my education. Mm. So I also send uh, um, the invitation to you know Jeremiah Uruko. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, because I used Miss Maseno, uh, he wasn't even sure who that was, mm. you know, like mm. literally because he supports so many people. Mm. Like he has supported so many children to pursue their education. That's literally, he can't even cram all their names, yeah. you know. So I was one of those people mm. he also supported, mm. right? So um, he said, Miss Maseno, you know, I said, this is Bina. It's like, oh, your other name is uh, Maseno. I said, yes, my other name is actually um, uh, Maseno. Mm. Uh, but he wasn't able to come that day mm. for my graduation. Mm. But he really did appreciate mm. that. Mm. I actually finished mm. uh, college, you mm. know, because like he said, uh, he said, you came to ask, asking for help. Yeah. Um, we hope you can hold yourself accountable mm. enough to actually finish education. Yeah. And you did. Yeah. It's like, mm. I'm not going to be here trying to tell you mm. or bring me your report so that mm. I can see whether you're going to school or mm. not. Mm. You know, mm. I trust you to actually mm. take the resources, mm. go pay them, mm. go pay for the, for the exams and actually finish. So no follow up, no receipts, nothing, just nothing. finish your education. Finish your education. And you did. I think they just so the pain and how broken I was mm. when I was actually looking for support mm. and said, go finish your education. Mm. Yeah. So you got, you got your certification in, yes. in uh, hotel management? Hospitality and hospitality. hotel management from um, 
so what did that include? Like now you, you, your, your earlier dream of, of learning how to be a chef, how to be a cook has yes. been realized through this. Yes. But uh, hospitality and hotel is a lot more. So you're also exposed to a lot of yeah, other Yeah, housekeeping, very, mm. you know, um, you know uh, being a receptionist, mm. you know, so it's all, you know, it's all those skills. It's so it's administration, mm. it's housekeeping, mm. it's, um, it's culinary arts, mm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, preparing uh, various dishes dishes, mm. various cuisines, mm. whether it's Indian, mm. uh, whether it's Italian, you know, uh, mm. African dishes, mm. you know, so it's all that because mm. you examined in, mm. uh, you examined in all that. Mm. Yes. I am here just salivating, hoping to have <laughs> one day to have your meals. And, and, and something mm. before we move on to the next part, there is, um, you, when you became, your name Bina Maseno. Maseno is, um, I know we began by just mentioning um, Kisi as a background, but yes. Maseno, we know it as a school, mm -hmm. we know it as an institution. Where does that come from? How did you get it? So, um, that's my family name. It's my dad's name. Mm -hmm. But um, I kind of feel like uh, my grandma was uh, uh, ahead of her times. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like she figured out this tribal thing in this country <laughs> yeah. is going to disadvantage my kids mm -hmm. because in um, um, my dad's family, they have mm -hmm. like different names, mm -hmm. right? So my dad is Maseno, uh, my dad's brother is Ocheng, mm. my dad's other, other brother, brother is Maina, and then the other one is Moi. Wow. Yeah. So they all have different names. So there's so, no way your name is betray your your association will betray you. Yes. That's yes. Really nice. There's no way. So when like you meet my dad's brother, That's... you'll think he comes from, um, let's say, Luoland, mm. Nyanza, because he's. Mm -hmm. um, He's uh, Ocheng. Mm. And then if you meet the other one, is Maina. Uh, uh, Maina. Uh, you know, and wow. then uh, if you meet the late now, mm. if you, I mean, if he was here, if he was here, mm. he was Moi. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That, that, that's brilliant. And then now uh, my dad is Maseno. So oh. um, we took Maseno, but course, the yeah. other bigger name, yeah. the, I mean, the family name, like the ultimate, mm. you know, like uh, uh, family name was Osebe. Osebe. Yeah, was okay. Osebe. Yeah. yeah, Osebe is pretty much kissy. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. That's yes. very, very Osebe. interesting. So um, I like it too, because yeah. then people can trace you, yeah. you know, yeah. literally they yeah. can trace you to uh, a particular tribe, that's especially true. in this country where that's true. we are struggling um, to weed out ethnicity, mm -hmm. which is denting our democracy in uh, so many ways, mm. such that when you say your name, someone is asking you, and what's the other name, mm, you know? Mm. Um, you know, what do they call you? Mm. So for and, you, you know, just drop Bina Maseno. Yes, like, are for you, them to are just you box you or place you, <laughs> it's you know, yeah. um, or, trace your, or trace your roots. Mm. So people trace my roots, you know, mm. to lower land, they trace my roots to um, Western Kenya, mm. you know, some trace my roots to you know, maybe kiss the land. Yeah. So, you know, people can just like place you, exactly. you know, and I think it's a beautiful yeah, thing because ethnicity impacts all of us in mm. so many, you know, um, negative ways. And mm. I mean like negative ethnicity yeah. where you are looking at someone uh, using the lens of their tribe mm. for you to either offer them opportunity, mm. uh, for you to either support them, for you to either align with them mm. uh, if you want to achieve a particular mm. goal, right? Mm. So, yeah. There is a place for um, positive ethnicity, but when it's negative, it's, it's just bad. Yes, yeah. yes. When it's negative ethnicity, mm. it's bad. Because mm. then we can't even uh, tolerate someone's opinion about something. Yeah. Because it's just like, no, 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 no. Mm. And I think we also really need to learn about um, tolerance, yeah. you know, mm. accommodating difference, mm. you know, accommodating mm. a different opinion, hearing mm. each other out. Mm -hmm. Because... People are speaking and it's coming from a place whereby they're influenced with different experiences. Mm -hmm. Like when someone is saying something, it's influenced by whether it's, you know, whether it's their background, whether it's uh, what has happened to them, like their lived reality, just different experiences. You know, for me, I'm always curious about how do we then build bridges of uh, and, uh, and understanding, you mm -hmm. know, that go beyond class that go beyond race that go beyond uh, negative ethnicity you know how can we hear each other out yes you're coming from point x and i'm coming from point z but we, all of us want to go to point a you know how then do we journey together and we can journey together 
if we can't even hear what the other person is saying, if we can't listen and understand where they are coming from, mm. what is informing their opinion, mm. what is informing their act, why mm -hmm. are they acting this way, yeah. why are they behaving this way, mm. you know, what is in informing how they choose to show up, mm. right? Yeah, so context. I think, you know, mm. and uh, uh, you know, we are, we are living in, um, in times whereby we just want to shoot someone's intellect, you know, uh, down like, yo, it's like, there's no place for this right now. And I'm just sharing what I know. Mm. And mm. it's informed by my day-to-day -day, uh, experiences. That's my truth, mm. you know. Yeah. All right. So at this point then, um, post-graphings, mm. what, what does life look like for you post-graphings? Um, <clears throat> so I finished graphings mm -hmm. and um, I passed so well mm -hmm. at, uh, uh, at graphings. And um, I'm looking at, uh, you know, an opportunity you know and um sorry let me just take that so i finished at graphins mm -hmm. and uh, i start doing uh internships mm -hmm. so i interned at uh, safari park mm -hmm. a hotel on uh thicker road mm -hmm. so i got to you know intern the different uh, kitchens they have mm -hmm. you know um at uh, nairobi not, I mean, at Safari, safari Park, because yeah. there's Nairobi uh, Safari there's Club, Nairobi, and then there's Safari exactly. Park, the mm -hmm. one at, uh, on, Thicker on, on Thicker Road. Mm -hmm. And then uh, um, I got, you know, like uh, just a few, you know, like those uh, uh, few jobs they have uh, mm. when um, when they have like clients. Mm. Um, so I did a bit of that, mm. both at uh, Safari Safari Park and mm. uh, at uh, Intercontinental. Mm -hmm. But then I had this desire to really pursue um, journalism, mm -hmm. really pursue my mm -hmm. education, in, you know, and study uh, journalism. Mm -hmm. So I go back again to, you know, like my uncle mm -hmm. who um, helped me, you know, mm -hmm. throughout uh, high school. High school. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Uncle Rogers, it's me again. You know, I, you know, I have passed so well and I really desire to go to, um, to go to university. And um, um, I have also uh, done my research, you know, I'd like to pursue ABC. So um, we have a conversation and it tells me, okay, yeah, find out when, um, when they're going to have the next intake. So I go to actually your end and um, I had a bit of a challenge because uh, they're looking at my paperwork uh, for Uganda. And uh, there was, you know, uh, there was um, like a long process in terms of them also translating mm. Uh, converting yeah, those converting those grades look, to look, like yeah. a Kenyan grades, mm. you know, for them to see if they can actually admit me to take a journalism course at you mm. at the University of Nairobi. Mm. And I think it was the same. I think also with the most private, I mean, most public universities mm. that I tried to apply to. Mm. So I applied to um, uh, USIU, and their conversion rate was quite quick. Mm. So I tell my uncle, so USIU has accepted me, and uh, um, the semester begins in September. And uh, he said, Nitajika uh, Kamoa, ni ensure at least to memaliza masomo. I'll try my best mm. um, and uh, ensure that you finish your university uh, education. Mm. And you know, all along, he's like been supporting me, mm. even when I was being supported at Graphins. Of course, you know, you have your day to day. Mm. Uh, so he's been supporting me like all along from uh, um, uh, high school. So that is how I ended up in uh, university to mm -hmm. pursue my journalism mm. degree. Mm. Yeah. It still happened. I never give up on your dream. Yes. So, um, I never gave up on my dream. Mm. But when I was joining uh, USAU, mm -hmm. it was also at, at the time when elections were approaching. Uh. It was 2012, mm -hmm. right? Mm. And uh, so I had uh, 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 fundraised from mm. uh, uh, my uncle. Mm -hmm. And also, I had uh, fundraised uh, from um, other people as well, right? Who uh, had said uh, they're also going to support me in my education. Yeah. So I was like, hey, finally, you mm. know, finally, um, I have my education covered. You know, um, my uncle is going to support me. I have people who've seen my, you know, my grades from uh, graphings, mm. and they are following on my journey, uh, and they are willing to journey with me. So at least I have my education covered. So that was in 2012. Mm. So we were looking at an election in uh, 2013. Mm. And uh, so uh, for me, because of uh, um, the activism at the community level, where you're looking at um, lack of access, you know, to um, water, 
lack of access to electricity, poor sanitation that is tied to all of us, not just children, um, struggling with uh, whether it's cholera, but just diseases, you know, at the community. So we sit down with my friends at the community and uh, we're discussing elections, right? And uh, um, I, I just keep on telling them, do you know me by then is a two, is a tough take it here MCA because mm. I don't understand at times why our leaders don't consult with the community members mm -hmm. in terms of what our priorities are. Mm. Because even if you give me a bursary and I'm constantly sick because of poor sanitation in the community and I'm constantly going to the hospital, which is not even equipped, uh, which doesn't even have medicine, then it means I can't even be in school. I cannot even benefit from that bursary, mm. especially for the children in the community. Mm. So we start like having this conversation with mm. my friends. So I keep on telling them, but then I tell them I'm so scared because if I go, if I jump and participate in this election, then what happens to mm. uh, people who are supporting me, mm. right? Um, so I battle with those thoughts. Mm. And then uh, um, one morning, I wake up and I decide, you know what? I'm actually going to run for office. And uh, I call my friends, Akina Collins, mm. I tell them I have decided. I'm running for office. And they're like, yay, we're going to support you. And then you see, one thing I forgot is, all my friends were jobless. <laughs> all of them. That's why they were in the community and every mm. other day, you know. Mm. So, um, and I decide, yeah, I'm actually going to run for MCA, mm. Member of County Assembly, in Mbakasi Central Constituency, in Kayole. In Kayole. Where I was brought up, where I was born and bred. Yeah, MC. so is Kayole a word? Uh, Kayole is the name of the community. Oh, is the name of the so the word yes. MCA is oh, okay. I get it. Yeah, MCA yeah. member of <coughs> county assembly. Mm, mm, mm. So I decide I'm going to run for office mm -hmm. in Kayole where mm. I was brought up. Mm. But let me tell you, nothing prepared you for this. Prepares you for running for office in this country. Mm. Not even the trainings you participate in when you're uh, you know like uh, when they're actually putting together when the civil society is putting together trainings for aspirants. Uh, not even the advice you get, literally nothing prepares you for running for political office mm -hmm. in this country and I bet anywhere. Mm. So I jump in the race um, and then now comes the balance, balancing it with uh, education and uh, domestic chores at home, right? And uh, I'm unable to actually stay in class because as you know, siasa, how politics is, you're in class, and then your people are calling you. To make pangia or mama to say, 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 kuja to say, say. You know mm. how it is. Mm. People are calling mm. you. Oh, we've already put people together. Oh, there's a crowd here. Oh, there's a, a honorable coming to talk to members. I think you can ride on their meeting because you don't have money. You can partner with them. So you're receiving calls day in, day out. So you cannot even focus. So I sit down with um, um, uh, my lecturer. Um, one of the best lecturers uh, in uh, USAU, um, Dr. Mutua now, and uh, I tell him what's happening to me. I tell him I would not want to fail this class. And um, I know we have to submit assignments uh, in good time. We have to do our projects. And this is so hands-on, you know, like when you're doing journalism. I have to take a break. So I take a break, you know, I take a break. And uh, bang, I lose uh, part of my scholarship, just like that. Because then some people who were supporting me thought I was not serious. They're just like, this chick has struggled. Mm. This lady has struggled all her life to raise school fees, to have people support her. How unserious can you be to want to run for political office at 22 years? Like, who do you know who has won, uh, you know, political office at 22 years? Like, do you know any MCA who's 22? Like people would ask me, have you met any MCA who's 22 or 23 or below 25? And I didn't know any at the time, mm. you know. Uh, or do you even know, uh, you know, so they would ask me these questions mm. and I didn't have an answer. What party did you choose you to know? go with? Uh, so I chose to go with uh, uh, ODM, mm -hmm. but I didn't make it past mm. the nominations. Mm -hmm. So I went to uh, KNC, Kenya National Congress. Mm. So at the time, uh, Peter Kenneth was the 
presidential uh, uh, aspirant. candidate mm -hmm. aspirant mm -hmm. uh, under you know under Kenya National uh, Congress. Mm -hmm. So I joined uh, KNC, mm. and uh, that is how um, now I got to the ballot, mm. right? Mm. But then politics um, and campaigning, mm. and campaigning when you're young, yeah, when you're female, mm. when you don't have resources when you don't understand uh, the impact of uh, not having uh, strong security, all that um, impacts how you participate. What are some of the experiences you had? So, <clears throat> like I said, number one, um, nothing prepared me for this journey, mm -hmm. for my political journey, mm -hmm. you know. So even at the family level, there was curiosity, like, you know, like we are not a political family. How are you getting into politics? You know, and uh, I remember even from my favorite people like my grandma. In fact, you know, when my grandma uh, had him running for political office, she was like, "Hey, that is that is just how I want to get a grandchild because <laughs> who's gonna want to marry a political woman like you at this particular age?" Because you know, like for most of uh, our family members, they want us to get married in our twenties, you know, like in our twenties. And there you are, you want to run for political office. And it's like uh if you're you're you know, if you're female, you're too vocal, you're an activist, uh you want to pursue a political ambition, it reduces your ability to be attractive to a potential suitor. Mm. And uh of course my mom was worried as well uh, about um uh, my security my safety, yeah. and uh, also about my education mm. because then <clears throat> when you lose your scholarship mm. who's going to want to support you mm. after you know then people kind of think uh, you're literally not serious mm. you know and then sometimes when you run for office and you're young people can kind of think oh you just want to make a name like no one takes you seriously you know people think I oh, just want to make a name or you just want to get nominated you know people are not actually listening to your agenda to the pain you witness every other day that is actually leading you to want to pursue uh, this particular office, you mm. know, mm. because that's the smallest unit, uh, you know, uh, from our constitution yeah. that is actually able to pick Bring the change. needs mm. of the citizens and uh, what the priorities are and be able to work on their priorities, mm. you know. And then uh, uh, security, you don't have resources, you know, to um, fund your security. And sometimes we're not even honest about security. I remember uh, being told that uh, I have to move around with goons. And I was just like, goons? Why would I even need goons, you know? So for me, um, I did mention before that uh, because I couldn't fund my security, I had uh, my friends mm. give me security, mm. you know, uh, mm. take part because they're just like any bina. Mm. You give us so much hope. Mm. Us, we're going to do our part as your friends. Mm. We're going to be part of your security detail, mm. you know. So I had to rely on my friends, on mm. my peers from the community. Mm. Um, and then uh, this morning, I am waiting. It's uh, it's at uh, it's at about six six actually in the morning. In the morning, six a.m. in the morning, and I'm waiting for uh, my friend to come. First of all, he's in Teja. He's not responding. And he didn't respond at midnight as well, you know, because uh, I was trying to um, let him know that Kesha uh, to because I didn't have resources. What I used to do is some days I'd even wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning to go to the stage. You know, like when guys were to kwa soko, kwenda kwa soko, ile matatu. Because sometimes you find citizens go very early before 6 when mm. the transport is cheap. Yeah. So I would want to leverage on that crowd, mm. you know, because I don't have money to wow. pay people who can put people together for me. Mm. So I'd wake up way early. You know, there are days I remember would actually leave at 4.30. So that by 7, we've gone to all the stage. Tumongia na mama mboga, tumongia na wala watu na area, wenyo na tembea mgu. You know, the guys who are waiting for my 3, 4, 40 bob to town because from 6 a.m. it's rush hour, it's 100 bob. We are targeting that crowd. Mm. So we'd divide ourselves. We'd meet at 4.30. And the, for 30 a.m. in the morning. Mm. And then by five, we are out. We spread ourselves. Mm. I'm just like, you're going to be in this stage, you're going to be in this stage, in that stage, in that stage. And then for me, I'll be moving around. Once I finish for this stage, I'll come to where you are. Because in the morning, you're giving out your brochure. We are voting for this person. This this person stands for A, B, C, D, right? So by the time I come there, they're just like, Ato le mwishimwe tu nasema ndio uyu apa, you know? So by the time it come, by the time it gets to about 8 a.m., you can imagine, yeah. I'm already beat. You're done. I'm 
like I'm so spent out. Mm. I mean, I'm so spent. Mm. I'm so tired, mm. you know. And then we go home, take breakfast. Now begin door to door from ten. Mm. Okay. We woke up at what time? From 4.30 a.m. Take a break. 10, we have another crew coming in because now these guys have to take a little break because they're going to come in back at 4. So they go take a break, go to their businesses. Now I have another set of people coming for doing door-to-door -door from 10 to 2. We take a break, Kidogo, then another team comes in. Once I door-to-door, ya jioni sasa. Oto metoka kazi, door-to-door, ya jioni. So the ladies would do that. So I told uh, my friend, uh, mm. Tomorrow, mm. uh, be here by 5.30 because we go, we're going out at 6. Tulikuwa mm. tunayla yosoko ya Soweto. Apo kwa Soweto because uh, many people go take their stock. Like uh, people mm. who sell in uh, uh, small kiosks, mm -hmm. they go take their stock there. So you have lorries coming in, pickups coming in with foodstuffs. Mm. So you have many people going in because they're buying in wholesale, yeah. right? So the retailers, we're targeting the retailers. Mm. So I told them, tomorrow we're just going to the Soweto market in mm. the morning to mm. target the retailers there, okay? Mm. So at uh, 6.30, he's not in because, uh, you know, like most of the time when you go to the market, guys are like, ah, but you know, attack it to Kidogo, do what and what, so mm. they would really, really help me. Mm. So at uh, 7, I'm called by the brother and mm. um, I'm, I'm told that uh, um, so-and-so was shot dead at 3 a.m. So I'm like, what do you mean was shot dead at 3 a.m.? At he, he was one of the most wanted criminals and uh, they had warned him they had told him to go to up country and uh, he had refused to go to up country and actually it was your campaign that kept him busy mm. you know from him actually engaging in his criminal activities mm. but still they told him to go to up country you know that if he stays they're going to take him out. You know, those are the days when mm. uh, the police come, they give you money, mm. transport literally. They tell mm. you, this 1,000, go to a country. Mm. We've marked you, just go. So I didn't have this background for some of my friends. Like I said, for me, this was my friend. We schooled with my friend, you know. So um, they're like, yeah, he actually, you know, remained because he was supporting your campaign, was so passionate about your campaign, and he really believed in you. And, um, you know, for, for a moment, I can't even reconcile these two people, you know. I can't reconcile my friend being one of the most wanted criminals, my friend being targeted, my friend being told to go to a country, my friend being associated with, uh, you know, owning a gun, my friend being associated with some of the criminal activities I was being told about, you know. And uh, my heart just sank that morning. And you know, the thing with uh, uh, politics, there's no time for you to hurt, you know, because time is so precious. You have very few months, you know, for you to make sure people understand what your agenda is. So there's even no time for you to just sit in and mourn the way you'd want to mourn your friend. So, you know, the other people, for them, they're just like, they're on schedule. They're like, we're supposed to go to the market, to Mefika. They don't understand the kind of friendship I shared with my friend, you know. So then they're like, Tunafa kwenda kwa soko. So I'm, I'm still trying to, digest this news that my friend was shot so um and he was the lead security detail for me so that day i step out without my lead security detail you know we finish the morning errands and i tell them i have to go home they're just like apana, kuna mkutano, apana, apana, apana. so i wasn't myself that day you know um and then um, at around uh, 4 5 5 p.m in the evening there's a meeting in one of the plots you know, like one of, it's not apartments, it's just a plot, those plots in the community. Mm. There's a meeting there. There's, you know, like this, these flats that have so many people, you know, so mm. the, there's a meeting in there, in there, in one of the plots. Mm. So they tell me, um, you need to come and talk to these people uh, because there's a um, Muheshimiwa, there's a, um, another aspirant who will be there. So you can ride on that meeting because they've already gathered people there, right? So I'm a bit hesitant because I'm moving out without security and I don't even have enough goons with, it, with, with me. So I go there and um, I get there. By the time it's my turn to speak, it's almost 7 p.m., right? And uh, I finish speaking and when I'm about to exit, someone tries to strip me. Someone tries to pull down my skirt to strip me in that meeting. So I'm screaming. I'm like, who's that well, you know like there's a commotion well, you know why is someone trying to do this 
And then I am shocked because people around me are telling me, Ati, Tulia, Tulia, guys are going to think you're an angry woman. I'm like, angry woman? An angry woman? Someone is trying to strip me and people are going to think I'm an angry woman. You know, Ati, Nisiasa, guys are going to think you're you have anger issues. You know, Ati, you know, this is how it is. Ati, Kosi, there's some goons who've been sent to this particular meeting, you know. And you know, I go home and I sit with myself. I call my friend who was the DO at the time. I tell him, I've gone to this meeting. This is what happened. The next morning, I go and report that case. I say, I went to meeting X and X and uh, someone tried to strip me. And uh, the first thing was uh, um, then I say, does it matter? At yes, it matters because if you belong to Chama X and you went to Chama Z zone, you should know and expect violence. Wow. You should know that's how people are. I think if you, uh, if you don't have a thick skin, then you're not ready for politics, Mrembo. Where would you see us? Where would you see your area? And I'm thinking I've come here to seek help because I don't know anywhere else where I can run to. You know what I mean? The system is messed up. You know, so um, that day I left that station. I knew I'm on my own. I knew I'm on my own. And I tell people sometimes these spaces change who you are. And uh, I called some of my friends who are like uh, aspirants. And uh, you know, because there are very few women in the political spaces, majority of the guys you can access are actually men. So I call my friend and I say, this happened to me yesterday. I've also lost my friend. My friend was shot. Uh, my security detail was shot yesterday. I didn't know he was one of the criminals uh, being sought out. And uh, I remember he says, you know, Bina, I keep on telling you, you have to show your capacity for violence as a survival tactic. I'm like, what is capacity for violence? How am I supposed to show my capacity for violence? It's just like, that's how the system is. People don't know you. If you're killed today, you don't even make news. You're new in the game. People don't know you. People don't care about you. How old are you again? My goodness. So I say, how am I supposed to show my capacity for violence? It's like, I told you you must move around with goons. I'm like, I don't have money to pay goons. Sina Yodo, I told you you must vet your goons. I'm like, how am I even supposed to vet goons? You know, like, I'm receiving all this information in the middle of a campaign. You know, like, I have very few months to actually election day. It's like, Bina, let me tell you. Yes. It's like, Bina, you must learn to show your capacity for violence as a survival tactic. People must be afraid of you. Figure that out for yourself. That's what I can tell you. Figure that out for yourself. You must learn to speak up for yourself. You must learn to fight for yourself because that's how the system is. It's not ready for you. It's not ready for clean politics. And I go home and um, I start going through all the texts that people would send me. Because when people realize you're going to be on the ballot, even if you're going to win by a thousand votes, you could be the reason why someone loses. Because most of the time you find for the member of uh, county assembly, the margins are so small. People lose with even 200 votes. So meaning, if you have a thousand, it could be the reason why someone is number two. Mm. And because also our politics are tribal, people mm. start looking at you with the lens of your tribe. Mm. Oh, how many uh, tribex do we have in this campaign? Oh, okay, so you're going to split the votes. Eh? Oh, so you've been sent to split the votes. So people start targeting you for reasons that are beyond what you're actually thinking about, you know. People start targeting you because of the tribe you come from. They're just like, oh, I'm so sure Bina has been sent to split the votes for tribe X because she's from tribe Z, you know. I'm like, how am I splitting someone's votes? I came to this race because of the pain I have seen mothers going through I'm like, my mom runs a kiosk. My mom's friends literally do laundry to educate their kids. I know what it means when kids don't access education. I have friends who dropped out of school because of teenage pregnancy. I have seen the, I have seen the impact of teenage pregnancy on my friends' lives, not even other people, my friends' lives. I know what it means, you know, when you can't even access water. Because your periods, your menses don't know when you have water, when you don't have water. Your menses don't know that, you know? So if I have to buy pads and I still have to buy water and I don't have resources, I have seen why people actually trade sex for pads. I have seen it firsthand. 
growing up in the community, growing up in Kayole. I have lost friends, you know. I have had my two friends being killed mob justice because of unemployment. My security detail was shot dead and I did not even know he was engaged in a criminal activity. And someone is thinking I'm in this race to split votes? I'm in this race because I want to be nominated? Are you kidding me? Like, are you kidding me? So I would like get so taken aback when people would say some of these things, you know. When someone would look at me and think, um, but you're young, you still have time. I'm like, wow, I still have time. You know, when I can't even access basic needs. So how much longer do I have to wait if I still have time? And I would sit down with myself and I tell young people all the time that you must engage in political processes because the decisions our politicians are making, especially senior politicians, we will bear the consequences of those decisions much longer because you have a much longer time to live on earth. Mm. All factors constant. If you don't die young, you have a much longer time to live with the consequences of the decisions being made by a politician. If someone is 60 and they're making a decision right now that is going to impact climate change, right? And you're 20, you have a much longer time to live with the impact of pollution of climate change than someone who's 60. Because if all of you are to get to 90 years of age, they have 30 years. How much longer do you have? You have about, what, 70 years to live with the impact of poor pollution because of a decision someone is making right now, you know? And that's why we must engage, right? So I would look at that even when someone are looking down at my age, at my gender, you know, and saying, uh, you know, whose girlfriend are you? Do I need to be someone's girlfriend to tell you about my pain? Tell you about what I see every other day? Isn't my pain a motivating factor enough for me to want to consider this? I just lost a scholarship because I, get, I got in the race. You don't think I'm serious? You know, I just lost a scholarship. And for, me, and for me, the stakes were so high because it meant if I don't win this race, then I don't even know where I'm going to start from. I don't know where I'm going to start from to raise money again to go back to school. So for me, the stakes were so high. When I tell you I would wake up at 4.30 a.m. to even target guys who are going to the market, it's because I knew, like, Bina, if you don't get this, first of all, it will be like you're a poor decision maker. You know, you are a poor decision maker. You know? So the incident, uh, the violence, you know, and that is why I care about gender-based violence. That is why that, you know, like all the experiences I had running for political office have shaped my work at Badili Africa, right? Um, because gender-based violence remains a very key deterrent to women participating in political offices. Because that day, that day I was stripped, I would have quit. Mm. I would have quit that day. Absolutely. I looked at some of the texts I would receive and I remember one time Someone uh, wrote to me, I'll just say it in Kiswahili because it's so disgusting, you know. And someone wrote to me and said, Kesho kikuja grao, tusa kuingisha chupa. You know. And I remember for the first time after what happened to me, I was so scared Can that that week I didn't go to campaign. And then I'm there reflecting on uh, people telling me I have to show my capacity for violence as a survival tactic. And I'm like, this game is changing me. This is not who I am. This is not who I need to de who I need to be. Where are the institutions that are meant to protect us? You know, who needs to hear us? You know, because I tell people, even when we're programming around women's political participation, you can't put everyone together because you can imagine for someone, a senior woman perhaps, uh, a senior woman perhaps, uh, who's been working for some time, who's built their social capital, they have someone to lean on. Hmm. You, you're 22. Your friends are jobless and some of them are in school, you know. So it's not like you've even worked in the NGO space to even build your social capital, mm. you know. So you don't even know where to tap or where to go to, even mm. for mentorship. Mm. You don't even have friends who are politicians to mentor you. You're just fresh from school. And like maybe someone who's been working for some time, they've been saving money either in a circle or who's been working for some time and they can even use little money to take a loan. Mm. And then given our cultural norms in this country, 
as a woman, you don't even inherit land. So you don't even have collateral that you can sell. I mean, mm. I mean, that you, don't, you don't even have collateral that you can use and then get a loan to pump into your campaigns if you have to. You know, to even take care of your day-to-day -day needs, whether it's your mobility, you know, to, for you to be able to move from point A to X. Mm. You know, even your own friends are so scared of participating actively in political spaces. Mm. How many young women do you know below 25 who are active in political spaces? Even in social media spaces, how many do you know? How many? And today, to even test that concept, just go to any uh, social media post that has been done by a man who's vocal right look at those comments and count how many of those comments actually are women how many women do you see because i'm very curious about that every political blogger who's male i study their comments and if i see a female who's commented i follow them up to their profile i want to know you know what they do i want to know what their interests are i want to know if they're in the political space i'm telling you you, you look at the comments majority of those comments are still men and even when you follow most of those female comments there, it's not your typical 21-year-old girl. Mm -hmm. It's not your typical 25-year-old girl, you know. So I get concerned about these things. So it means even my own friends cannot even comment about my political candidature. They can't even support me online because they are so afraid of being branded and trolled. Mm -hmm. You know, because they'll say something about politics and someone will call them, now what are you telling us? Mm -hmm. You slay queen? Because they'll comment there and someone will go to their profile and see how they show up and then start trolling them just because of the comments they made. Mm. And that is why when some of my friends could not even support me, mm. could not even comment, even share my posts, they're just like, hey, my mom is going to think what has happened to me. You know, they couldn't even come to my political rallies. I rarely, I barely, I barely saw young women participating in political rallies. Mm. During my, my time, when I was running for office, mm. and even right now, mm. you know, when I go to political party meetings, mm. when I go to political yes, rallies, later. I barely see. Mm. Online, I study Twitter, who's commenting? Who's tweeting about a political matter? I'm very, when I see a woman tweeting about a political matter, in fact, I follow them. I follow them. You know, because there are not many people sharing their opinions boldly in online spaces because people fear being trolled. Mm. Online violence, cyberbullying, mm. you know, shame has become the new commodity that people are even using, you know, to um, to fuel their, you know, their followership, mm. you know. So you find mm. like you're uh, um, a blogger, mm. you want your page to grow. Mm. So when you shame a particular person, you're, you're just like, oh, see who Bina was caught with, something like that, mm. you know. Then that drives traffic to your site. Yeah. But you see, you're using shame as a commodity it has become a commodity okay. but who is likely to be shamed in this era mm. it's a woman mm. it's a woman who's likely to be shamed right so it is all that um and um, you, you, i'm you were 22 at the time yes oh my goodness yeah i was just turning 23. so on the election year is when i was turning 23. Mm. so I sit down with the SMSs I'm getting, and then uh, my aunt comes home one day and she says, uh, I heard you're not campaigning. So I say, um, I don't even have a means of moving around. And um, um, she says, um, why? Um, I'm like, I can't even fund my security. I don't even have money. I don't, like, I don't even have a car. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And she says, talk, talk to your Uncle Rogers. And then I'm just like, how am I going to tell Uncle Rogers? Uncle Rogers is already paying my school fees. Mm. I've already taken a break from school. How mm. am I going to tell him? Just like, tell him. He's your friend. Tell him. So I WhatsApp my uncle because he's in the States. I tell him, um, this is what is happening. Mm. Uh, I am not getting the support that I need. Mm. But I believe I really need to do this. Mm. Um, you understand the kind of family that we've grown up with, uh, we've grown up in. I believe I need to do this and um, I'm not going to back out. So I tell him um, how scared I was because I was stripped, mm. like someone tried to strip me. So mm. I tell him the campaigns are so brutal mm. and um, I, need, I need support. I need to move around. I tell him I need security uh, and I tell him I need to take care of people because when people come at home, I don't even have money to feed them. 
So I tell him I need money. I need resources because I'm not bribing people. But when people come at home, when people move around with me, they need food. And I need that. So um, he listens and he says, I'm going to support you. And he calls one of my uncles and he says, you have any son and uh, Bini is going to have a rally uh, in uh, over the weekend. I need you to support her. I'll take care of the costs. Whatever costs Bini is going to incur for her mobility, I'm going to take care of that. And of course, people are telling him it's not worth it investing in uh, Bina because she's not going to win. And he says, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter. I said, I'll take care of the costs. So I want to know whether you guys can get her a pickup. Whatever she needs, we're going to invest in her. But they're just like, oh, you know, we don't come from a political family. Uh, we don't think you need to invest your resources in her campaign. You know how elections are. You know, she's not, she didn't even get the party ticket for ODM. This area is for ODM. This area is for ODM. She didn't do her calculations as well. She said, and uh, you know, and remember Uncle Roger saying, are you guys going to decide for me how I'm going to send, spend my resources? So yeah, um, that is how I got back mm. uh, in terms of, uh, you know, my movements. Mm. And uh, that fueled, mm. you know, uh, my campaign, mm. but also it gave me hope mm. that someone believes in what I'm doing. Mm. And I think for me, that is why even when I support people, I know sometimes it just takes one person to believe in you. Like one person can give you so much hope, you know, in whatever thing you're doing. And I try not to shatter anyone's dreams because I don't know what inspires their dreams. You know, I don't know what, is, what their experiences are. I don't know what that is, you know. And for me, even just my uncle saying, saying, I believe in you, you know. I don't think it's immature for you to want to run for political office at 22. You understand uh, your lived experiences, you know, you understand your pain. And uh, I'm just here to support you, you know. And um, um, at least with that, I was able to support my friends mm. who are moving around with me. Mm. Um, I was able to um, get security. Mm. I was able to be able to move from point A to Z, mm. you know, and um, it also helped me as mm. well. Just speak to my friends boldly, mm. you know, like mm. as, a, as, as a leader, mm. you must inspire mm. your confidence. people who are supporting you. You mm. know, like if you don't inspire confidence in people who are coming to support you, like even then they'll be deflated, mm. you know. So that alone, I was like, tomorrow we get back in the game mm. from tomorrow for 30 a.m from 4 30 a.m to kokoa to kokoa stage to mm. not move around so we got back to the same schedule mm. we move around come home take mm. breakfast you know again mm. do um xyz mm. um and covering a a, a word it might look like it's a small thing but yes. i'm sure kaiola is not like the smallest of places so it's you, not your movements and your area was not a, a small a, a small size to to move it's not because uh you see you can just campaign in your ward because yeah. someone might not be living in your ward yeah you know but uh, but they are registered in your ward mm. you know so mm. even for us going to areas like uh, soweto soweto is in embakasi east mm -hmm. but the people who come to vote in embakasi central you know so you just can't uh, assume that um uh you'll only get votes from guys living in your ward. Mm. The guys who are registered there, mm. but they don't, don't even don't live, live there. there. The guys even who live in Embakasi and they come, I, I mean, Embakasi East. That's true. Uko Barracks, mm. Uko Feather, mm. you know. Mm. And they still come and register, mm. you know, and uh, vote in um, Embakasi Central, mm. you know. Because of how, you know, politicians like moving uh, mm. voters from point X, from, um, from uh, constituency Z mm. to come and vote for them. Mm. So, um, yeah. And um, I think traversing the community, one of the challenges, another challenge as well was uh, convincing the senior electorate to support mm. my campaign, mm -hmm. right? Mm. Because um, 
when I would go and talk to men, um, I remember one time I went to this meeting. Mm. It was uh, like uh, senior men, you know, like was they, you know, those landlords in the community, mm. right? They were having their chama meeting, and um, they were told there's a uh, uh, an MCA aspirant who's coming. So I think they were expecting, mm. you know, some yeah. um, some senior person mm. or um, not just a young girl, mm. you know, literally. Mm. So we walk in and they are assuming the people have come in with me, one of them is the aspirant and not me. Like me, I'm just escorting yeah, them. Because <laughs> you can imagine, mm. uh, because of the campaign, I was slender. Like mm. I was slender. I lost about... I think about seven to nine kilos, just moving around. Mm. I was about 49. I was 49 kgs. Mm. So you can imagine, like this is big. This is not 49. Imagine, you know, like um, my parents think I'm small. They keep on telling me I need to eat. And this is not 49. So you can imagine I was slender than this. Mm. So one Mze asks me and says, eh, eh, my daughter, you know, when I look at you, you're the age of my third born. Um, you're young, you're not married, and uh, but you know, the day you get married, you probably will be married in Western or Central or God knows where, and you won't be living in this community, and you're supposed to serve us. And uh, for people like us, older people like us, we look at how someone has managed their family, their smaller unit, um, as an example of how they're going to manage the bigger family, which is all of us in this constituency, right? Or in this ward, right? So we haven't seen any of that with you. So why should we trust that you're going to take care of us as your bigger family? Hmm. Well, we don't even know whether you can even manage to take care of a smaller family. Yeah. You had to contend with a lot. Like that was the first question mm. they asked me, you mm. know. Mm. And I'm standing there, scanning the room. I'm just seeing white beard, white hair. You mm. know, like literally. I want to my landlords. You mm. know, because I'd been told been there for these landlords, you know, can even do two notes. You mm. know, they can tell the caretakers to actually campaign for you. So mm. it's very integral, Bina, for you to come and ask votes here, mm. because you can imagine the flats in mm. uh, informal settlement. Yeah. One flat alone has like 60 people. That's just one true. flat. Yeah literally has like 60 people because mm. it's single single rooms mm. and uh at most double rooms mm. you know so that's the first question you know like that's the question that is actually setting the tone in the meeting mm. and you're standing there everyone is quiet like if a needle fell down you'd actually hear the needle like it was mm. dead quiet mm. so i didn't expect that but i knew um from uh, my previous experiences this particular uh, electorate I had to be very keen with them, very keen with them, because even for the for, for majority of them, they're not asking me for money because they're just like, now a 23 year old, what does she have? You mm. know what I mean in terms mm. of money, but they were very keen on my manifesto, mm. on my agenda, on my ability to articulate the challenges that are facing us mm. and to ensure that those challenges that I'm able to articulate, actually it's challenges that affect all of us. Mm. And I'm not just talking about youth, yeah. but I'm not just talking about women. women, yet the community is made up of everyone, mm. you know, both old and young. Mm. So I tell them, um, you know, it's true. You've said I look like your daughter and I could actually pass for your third born daughter. Mm. And I'm pretty sure that um, for where you're at right now, the people, you know, you send around to do errands for you is mm. your kids. Mm. I'm pretty sure, in fact, the younger ones are the mm. ones you send around for you. You mm. know, you send around to, you know, to do your day-to-day -day errands. Mm. You want them to run to town. Mm. You want them to, you know, to do X, Y, Z. You want them to, you know, to sit down with you and um, explain something to you. Mm. I'm sure it's your children who do that for you. All I'm asking is that you send me to parliament and you journey with me because mm. I cannot do it alone. Mm. So I just want you guys to send me with your problems mm. to parliament. Mm. I want to go represent your needs. Mm. The way you send your children mm. to run errands for you because they are solving a particular problem or a mm. particular challenge. Mm. I've just come here to collect your challenges. So I want you to send me with all your challenges and then journey with me, mm. you know, so that I can ensure I have factored in your priorities. That's pretty convincing. <laughs> I mean, I think you, politics you, teaches you a lot. You had to learn had how to, learn. to make sure there is inclusion, how yes. to make sure everyone, uh, the ones who ordinarily, 
manage power dynamics of that nature. Yes. Mm. Yes. I'm just like, just send me. Mm. Uh, I had to accept, first of all, that they're mm. looking at me as, as a very young, young person, person yeah. as someone who could pass for their daughter yeah. or their child. Yeah. So I had to accept that because, I mean, I cannot pretend that I am old mm. and I am not. Yeah. So I had to accept that and yeah. be like, okay, then how do I use this mm. to my advantage for where I am at? Mm. How do I use it to my advantage? Mm. Right? How yeah. did it play out in the ballots? Um, <laughs> that's another night that mm. I didn't even look forward to. Mm. Like, I don't even know. Have you been to actually uh, like a I polling station the night when they're announcing results? No, I've just been there to at a polling station to vote. Mm.